Portugal. And this story then will be told by Daniel. Daniel is an ambassador of the European IP Help Desk. And he is going to tell us, yeah, what are the different IP and business challenges faced by a European clean tech company when expanding in international markets. I'm, I'm very happy that also that uh, one of our in, uh, ambassadors is contributing to this workshop today. You know, our ambassador scheme um, consists of 48 uh, European IP help desk ambassadors from 28 countries, and they help us to have a better outreach to for IP awareness and IP training all over Europe or to SMEs all over Europe. So by this, I just give the floor to Daniel and yeah, happy to meet you. Hi, good morning, York. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. And it's my pleasure to, to say you good morning from Portugal and to share with you a, a case study from, from here. Uh, and I, the first thing that I should say is that Clean tech is not is not new. Is not a thing from the Green Deal, and our our case from that I will show you in minutes. Uh, it starts long time ago. I, I was a child at that time. Uh, so next slide, please. Okay, so it is a case of the advanced cyclone system. The first thing that I should say you is what is a cyclone. A cyclone is is this device that we have on the left side, and it is used to separate. Um, things that are in the air. So we have an inside, an influx that is air with particles. So it can comes from a, a boiler uh, with uh, almost all this dirty and dust. And you can use the cyclone for two purposes. One is to reduce and to to get your emissions very controlled. Okay, and where the clean air goes on top and all the dust is collected on the bottom. But on other industries, such as in pharma and foods, you, have, you are interested in the recovery of this product since they are very expensive. This is the work of a professor at the University, University of Porto. Uh, he had a long research line on that. And in 1998, he filed a Portuguese provisional patent on, on that. Uh, it goes for European patent application, and in 2007, uh, the patent was granted. At that time, there was few patents uh, in Portugal and in, in, the, in and in the industry. It is not now uh, nowadays it's, that situation is much much better, but that was uh, critical for the next steps. Why? Because this professor and entrepreneur, uh, he goes into an acceleration program where he met the, the, the current CEO of the Advanced Cyclone Systems Company. The professor is the CTO and the co-founder. And together, they go to the acceleration program. They do the product market fit analysis. They got the pilots and they use the, the, the Python to convince the venture capital to go in. So they, they, are, they have now six employers and they are in, in uh, 37 countries worldwide. They, they decide to internationalize very soon. Next slide, please. Because uh, they are in a very competitive market. They, are, they try, so the customers in this, in this market, they look for efficiency and for costs regarding the maintenance and, and operation. So there are other types of cyclones that are not that efficient. And you have on the top the filters. And so advanced, the, the value proposition of ACS is to have a very good efficiency, okay, at a certain low cost. On the right, we have uh, just an example of industrial installation in, in South America. Okay, next slide, please. And but live is, is very hard. And if you remember, the, the, the patent that was filed in 1998 is expired now. Okay, so they, they have an holistic approach of IP. They, they have uh, um, three patent families, one per technology. So the Hurricane, Ricyclone MH and Ricyclone EH. Uh, they, they filed some trademarks applications, but nowadays their most valuable assets in, in terms of IP are the software that they have the copyright and the source code. But on top of that, it is a trade secret because very few people inside the company can access to the software and the know-how. And these assets allow them to develop new cyclones in a very fast way. So their developed, developed proposition 
is not taking too much time developing because what is important in cyclone is, are the proportion between the side diameters and uh, and the height uh, and it depends on the the number and the inflow the types of particles if they are hard or not because there are a lot of chemical reactions inside the cyclone and all of that have a huge impact on the efficiency of collecting the particles on the bottom so with this situation with the software they are now very fast and they have a technology, a platform technology. So they, they, they are not relying on the first, first patent anymore. They can compete in the market with other patents because they, they did as Orcan, so they didn't patent just the, the full technology. So they have several patents for um, some complements with lasers and so on. And with that, they are doing a, a very, a very uh, personalized, customized approach to the market. So they, they are now exploiting new markets, as I told you, in pharma uh, and all kinds of industry in a very user-centric design because it is very complex um, to solve these problems. Okay, they have to have a huge know-how in chemical engineering to develop a very good cyclone. And with that, they have a competitive, competitive advantages. Uh, okay, IP, how strong is IP? And it depends on, on, the, on the contracts, all right? So in, in, in some territories where, uh, like in the US and Europe, they, they have a, a strong importance and uh, they help a lot of doing. Uh, in other markets, they have to, to, to rely and complement with, with other kinds of contracts. So when you have a patent, you, you have to, to be aware that uh, you, you should fine tuning uh, in the country where you are doing the business. Next slide, please. And so Advanced Cyclone Systems is now in 37 and working with very, very big companies. Um, they, they, okay, they, they use the IP to compete internationally. Uh, it is a, a niche, okay? It is not a huge market. But there is a trend, as we know, all these uh, legal impositions and the Green Deal, it's, it's, it's a very uh, good opportunity to them to keep growing and to expanding to other markets that are, are not in, the, in their map now. Next slide, please. As an ambassador, my mission is to connect with people. So uh, when Portuguese SMEs or other SMEs contact me, what the benefit they have is because I have several, several roles, okay? I'm the head of technology licensing office at Inesh Tech. I'm also part of other networks. Uh, I'm professor at the faculty for economics and, and management. And I, I have a past as a, a biomedical researcher. So to me, it's easy to understand their needs and to connect someone that can help them at creating value at being informed about IP. And that is uh, the impact of uh, an ambassador. Next slide, please. And we have also an in-house case. So from this last, the lessons learned with, with this case of the ECS, we develop a software that uh, is based on artificial intelligence algorithm that is with a, a Portuguese company called Agro Dutez Atlantic. So it is wastewater treatment. And what the software do is to optimize the water level because um, as close as you are from the top, uh, the more energy you save. And wastewater treatment plants consume a lot of energy. Uh, so this 20% savings, it represents a huge economical impact on the efficiency of these processes. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, but um, this, this ePredator software was generated in a H2020 project as a joint ownership. So it uh, imposes uh, several challenges to doing a proper IP management. So all the, the helpline and European IP help desk, the fact sheets and webinars were crucial for Inesh Tech and for all the partners to be trained in these issues because for the company, it was the first time that they were dealing with an IP question. Uh, on top of that, we are talking about a computer implemented invention. 
So this, this uh, close link with the European Patent Organization was very, very important to discuss the two world approach and, and what should be patent or not. Uh, software, it, it complies with a lot of different IPRs, so the database, the source code, also the open source compliance and trade secrets are all there and, and it should be clear for all involved partners what should be protected or not. Uh, the internationalization, our partner wants to go to China and India, so uh, the connection with other IPL texts and the PCT with from IPO are also critical, uh, important tools. And of course, uh, some guidance on the trademark FTO, uh, are using TM, team view and also some guidelines from your IPO. So, IP and European IPL tests are really connected in the case of ePredator. Next slide, please. And to, to conclude, some lessons learned from these, uh, from these cases. So the first point that I should mention to you is that clean tech is not optional, right? So we should be aware that and they will be there, but they are with us for a long time, as we see from the ACS case. Um, data is also key in this digital technologies. So um, you should be, be prepared to share your success with, with companies or partners that will provide you high quality data to train your machine learning algorithms. So uh, that is a, a challenge and people are not aware of that. Um, please, uh, SMEs have a lot of, of very important stories and very important lessons learned. So read them as, as your, as your and Christian presented to us because they, they really inspired and they inspired me in this e predator case. Uh, look at your competitors, so be in the real world. Uh, and never forget that uh, you should mention that val do a uh, value driven IP management. Okay? Uh, don't patent because of the CV or uh, political reasons. Understand the business uh, that you want to protect and do it in this way. And just to conclude, next slide, just the contacts from the companies and, and the Nash Tech. And thank you very much for your time. And the floor is yours, Simon, your, thank you very much for the chance. <laughs>